Hello and welcome, this is Bisharp here, and this is the first episode of... I actually don't have a name yet. <laughs> but in this little series I'm going to be doing, it. I'm just going to cover Pokemon theories, trivia, weird facts, and anything of the likes. So yeah, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to cover, it's the theory around are Ditto's failed Mew clones. The reason for this theory is that Ditto and Mew share a few common traits, like the weight, color scheme in both normal and shiny forms, they are the only Pokemon that can learn the move Transform, and they are the only Pokemon that can learn all moves, even if Ditto can only learn them for a short time. There are also additional facts that help this theory, like the only places in the original games you could find Ditto's are at the Pokemon Mansion on Cinnabar Island, where it is said Ditto was being cloned, and the Cerulean Caves, where Mewtwo, the only successful clone of Mew, calls home. And even that their stats have similarities on their point spread, both being perfectly uh, even across the board. I think Ditto's at 48 and Mew's at 100 across the board. In my opinion, I believe that this is true, or at least it seems true because of so many coincidences with what Mew and Ditto share. For the next theory I'm going to cover, it's did Butterfree and Venomoth switch pre-evolutionary forms? If you look at a Caterpie and Venom uh, Venonat's family, you might be able to see some common body traits in between the two families. One being that Venom uh, Venonat and Butterfree have similar antennas, eyes, hands, feet, mouths, and the color scheme for both is purple. And the color scheme thing is just something I noticed while doing the research. Now with Caterpie, Metapod, and Venomoth sharing again the same antennas, or at least very similar stiffer, not like wiggly ones like Butterfree has, eyes and body style with the stripes. Plus, in Ken Shugamori's art, there is spots on the wings of, uh, of Venomoth, similar to Caterpie's. Granted, Venomoth doesn't share as many traits with Caterpie and Metapod as Butterfree with Venonat, but it does seem odd, doesn't it? Many believe that uh, the reason for the switch is evolutionary line. The switch in the evolutionary line is that since it was planned that Ash for Ash's first Pokemon he would catch was going to be a but uh, Caterpie. They thought it would be easier for kids to fall in love with a butterfly instead of a moth. Which, they're sort of right, because I wouldn't have mind if Ash cast away a Venomoth, but with Butterfree, I was damn near bawling my eyes out. Oh, that was such a horrible episode, but it's the best at the same time. There are counters t to this theory being that gnats don't uh, become butterflies. Yeah. Caterpillars do. Caterpie, Caterpillar, oh yeah, same thing, right? And that they're names, but names can be changed, of course. My opinion is this, maybe? Like, it's one of those really questionable theories. Um, it takes a lot of really looking at it, but it is uh, hard to say that there isn't many common traits in between the two. Tell me what you think on those two theories. Now I'm going to cover some trivia that you guys may not have known, and if you did, you just didn't quite realize it. Did you know that the guy that blocks the road in Viridian City didn't always want to, his morning cup of joe. In, in fact, in the Japanese version, he was drunk, and he was recovering from a hangover. <laughs> How ironic. In America, we want coffee. But in Japan, they, they the guy was just recovering from a uh, very nice party from the night before. Did you know that in Pokemon, numbers are a common thing? The three legendary birds, Articuno, Zo Zapdos, and Moltres, have the Spanish words for 1, 2, and 3, uno, dos, tres, while with the Pokemon Dino, Zwilius, and Hydreigon, they have the German words for 1, 2, 3, in, zwi, and dre. I'm probably mispronouncing something there, but yeah. In red, blue, and yellow, the Pokemon Lickitung couldn't learn lick? What? Wait, wait, what? what? Why? Lickitung. Lick. Why didn't they do that? Come on, Pokemon. Why? 
Now I think I'll end this off with some Pokedex entries. First, Heatmore. Using their very hot, flame-covered tons, they burn through Durant's steel bodies and consume their insides. This is coming from Pokemon White's Pokedex entry. O okay, Pokemon, we could have gotten that just by looking at their designs. Heatmore, designed after an anteater, and Durant, well, even in its name, has ant in it. We could have known that they were going to, like, Heatmores were going to eat Durant's, but we didn't need to know that they eat the insides and burn through the, like, ah, that's, like, why? On to the second one, Sheninja. Sheninja's hard body doesn't move, not even a twitch. In fact, its body appears to be a, merely a hollow shell. It is believed that this Pokemon will steal the spirit of anyone peering into its hollow body from the back. This is coming from Pokemon Ruby's Pokedex entry. I am never using a Shed Ninja then. Like, that right there, no. I don't, I don't want to die just because, oh, we used a Pokemon. That's no. Okay, N next. Number three and the final one, Snubble. <laughs> this one's so funny. It has an active, playful nature. Many women like to frolic with it because it's of its affectionate nature. This is coming from Pokemon Soul Silver's Pokedex entry. That Pokemon, the one that looks like it's just like growling and is just nasty all the time, is a playful, affectionate thing. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, whatever you say, Pokemon. <laughs> oh my God, that's gonna end it off for this episode. Um, I'm not sure how often these are gonna be uploaded because. Hopefully I'll have a lot of editing into it and all the research plus then personal life and then the other series. It, these are going to be uploaded sporadically, but they will be uploaded. Um, if you want, suggest what theories and trivia and Pokedex entries you want me to cover. Um, mostly this is just for me to voice my opinion on them. Because I'm not going to say I'm the first one to cover Pokemon theories. It, I'm for sure on that. So yeah, thanks for watching guys, and this is Bisharp, signing out.